Hello beautiful people, my name is Athel. Let's jump into it and today I'm going to continue on from yesterday's video where I talked about dopamine needing oxytocin to be created in the brain so that the question of uh, comfort creation was also really important in the ability to be attracted and create attraction. The dopamine needs the oxytocin. So there were a couple of really good questions in the comments. So I'm going to read them out and we'll jump off from there. Here we go. Curious about how this is affected by dopamine and oxytocin kicking in over a third party. Could that then cause a more fast-paced ebb of dopamine and oxytocin for the primary partner and a more rapid snapping of the peer bond? And that's a really, really good question. And I think there's a sort of a chicken and egg synergy here. So in the first part, a peer bond actually tends to be very, very resilient and strong. If a couple has a good peer bond with each other, um, it's very, very protective of the relationship. So you can have a good peer bond and you can see an attractive or even very highly attractive member of the opposite sex. You can recognize and experience sort of basic attraction to them to at least some degree but they're not actually having any motivation to seek them out or do anything about that. And even if that other person who's highly attractive is making a move, hitting on you, pulling some game, whatever it is, the intact strong peer bond actually works as a sort of a protective mechanism. So they can be making the moves and it's just not sticking because you're bonded to somebody else. But if the relationship starts to decline, attraction starts dropping, the comfort starts dropping, they're letting themselves go, life problems stack up, whatever it is, the relationship is declining and that peer bond is slowly weakening. Well, it can get to a place where it's weakened enough where someone else who's highly attractive or even equally attractive or even less attractive starts making some moves where you can slowly build a little bit of comfort, a little bit of attraction, a little bit of interest, and the peer bond can start slowly developing or a relationship can start developing with this outside third person. Now at first, the peer bond with the original partner is going to be much higher and the outside person is going to be lower. So there's no real threat here. At this point with the lower one, they're kind of like orbiters or hangers on or the hot guy that they might be interested in one day, but not right now. But as the relationship drops and drops and drops and the attraction and bond to the other person can go up, well, slowly you can reach this tipping point where they become more bonded to somebody else, this outside third person, and less bonded to the original primary partner. When that happens, the peer bond that they're attaching with this outside person becomes stronger and protective of that relationship. And the original partner, who they may still be in a serious relationship with or married or whatever it is, um, can actually start diminishing quicker and quicker because it's the outsider to what is now emotionally the true primary relationship. So I do think you can get this rapid shift where being attracted and attached to somebody else um, absolutely wrecks and kills the attraction and interest in the, the original primary partner. And that switch, that change, can look like it happens almost overnight, but it really doesn't happen overnight. It builds and builds over months or even years to get to sort of a tipping point. And when it reaches that tipping point, that's when it looks like it's all suddenly a change of personality. They became a different person. Um, they totally were disloyal. They went off, did whatever they did. So I think it's a sort of a chicken and egg synergy thing. Here's the next question. Could this also explain why some of the get your ex back gurus focus on positive emotional contacts? Could it be the dopamine and oxytocin working together almost in reverse? Build the positive emotional connection and the attraction will follow. Uh, probably. Um, whether they know it or not, that is probably um, something that would need to happen. It probably does work that way to some extent. Uh, but regardless of how it actually works, 
the relationship that's in trouble has always got in trouble and diminished to some point where you know they've they've left they move on to be with somebody else or just move back with their parents or live alone or whatever it is in all of those cases the peer bond has started to break down so you always have to fix the emotional connection and uh, the the warmth and trust and comfort and all that sort of stuff that is always a fairly major piece of the puzzle that you need to work on to have any hope of bringing that person back and to be in a relationship with you. And it's at least as important as doing things that are going to create high value and attractiveness. It's at least as important as hitting the gym and being in really good shape. So it's always going to be a piece of the puzzle. So even if you didn't know exactly why the emotional connection is important, it's important enough that by focusing on it you're at least partially right and it's going to have some sort of positive feedback some sort of positive result and and just sort of speaking to some of the things i've I've dealt with over the years this question of emotional contact um, and how they the peer bond can slowly drop away this is one of my frustrations with what i've had to deal with and that by the time most guys are starting to really realize there's a problem. The peer bond has diminished so far that there's so much work to do to try and get it back to a really good place. I'm often faced with a situation where it's like, if he had just reached out six months ago or two years ago or three years ago or 10 years ago, there would have been so much more chance and ability and hope at fixing a relationship. But instead, it's gone down and down and down and down. And often it can go past the point of no return. The peer bond has truly reached a, just a some sort of you know, minimum threshold. It really does just snap. It really does just break. And at that point, Lots of luck creating relationship comfort because all the oxytocin gets turned off. Lots of luck tra- creating any kind of attraction because the dopamine gets turned off. And at that point, it's it's kind of game over. Now, which is not to say that you can't still be attractive and you can't still create comfort um, with people and members of the opposite sex, but it's going to have to happen in the context of a new relationship because the current partner has just reached that snapping point. So, that is about it for today. Hope you liked the video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good internet stuff, and I will talk to you soon.